Every once in a while, I have to do a video explaining a new health trend, and today we are talking about BPC-157. Now, when I first heard this, I genuinely thought it was a Star Wars character, but it's not. It's actually a peptide. And peptides, they've been having a bit of a moment recently. Ozempic is technically a peptide, and I think the success that the GLP-1 medications have seen have led to a lot of people trying to find more and more of these peptides that may enhance our health and longevity. So today I'll be going through what BPC-157 is, how it works, and whether or not there is any evidence to back up the claims about it. So let's go. BPC-157 stands for Body Protection Compound 157. This, as I said before, is a type of peptide, and technically it's a synthetic peptide because it's been made in a lab. But peptides are simply short chains of amino acids. They are essentially mini proteins. So your body is full of different proteins, right? And hopefully you have heard the term amino acids, but amino acids are the building blocks of life. And that is because amino acids put together in many different combinations make up the huge amount of proteins that make our body work. So if this entire structure, structure is a protein, then these little blocks are your amino acids. And there's just different combinations of them which make up the tons of proteins in the body. Your muscles are full of proteins, collagen is a protein, hormones are proteins, so insulin for example. So many things in the body are proteins. And so this BPC-157 is also made up of amino acids that link up together to form this body protection compound. Now, GLP-1 medications like Ozempic and Runjaro, they are also peptides, as I said before, but an important difference is that they are synthetic versions of something that naturally already exists in our bodies. GLP-1 is an actual hormone in the body, and those medications act in pretty much the same way as the natural hormone that we have. BPC-157 is not naturally occurring, it's based off a very small protein fragment that was actually found in stomach acid, which seemed to have some tissue protecting effects when they tested it out on animals. And so that fragment was the inspiration for making BPC-157, and they used similar amino acids. And because it was originally found inside stomach acid, BPC-157 can sometimes also be called gastric peptide-157. So how does it work? Well, so far, most of what we know about BPC-157 actually comes from animal or cell studies, meaning that there's been very little research that's been done on humans. But from these early studies, the main reasons that there is growing interest in BPC-157 is because of how it might help with tissue repair and recovery. So it's thought to be very regenerative, and this is because of a few different ways. First is that it's thought to be able to make new blood vessels, which is useful because this means that it can help move blood flow towards injured areas and more blood flow means faster healing and repair. Now, another way it works is through something called nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is a gas and your blood vessels and also your nerves, they use it as a bit of a signal. So if there is nitric oxide around, it actually leads to something called vasodilation. And this is when your blood vessels, they expand. Again, this means that there is more blood flow. And if we have more blood flow to the areas in your body that are needing repair, then the healing process is improved. Now, BPC-157 is thought to support the effects of nitric oxide and improve those vasodilation effects. But at this stage, it's unclear how exactly it does that. Now, there are a couple of other ways that it can help with tissue repair, like impacting on certain growth factors. But what you'll tend to find is that all of these methods that BPC-157 is thought to work, they actually all lead to one common thing, and that is improvements in blood flow. Whether that means increasing blood flow through your blood vessels or being involved in making new blood vessels, it's this blood flow that is so important because blood is essentially a delivery truck. In your blood is everything that the body needs to repair itself. And if you improve the flow, 
you make sure there is plenty of oxygen and therefore energy because oxygen is important for making ATP. Blood will bring with it amino acids, glucose, vitamins and minerals. It will bring immune system cells which are basically your cleanup crew. It brings growth factors which help to build new blood vessels. If you improve blood flow, you improve healing. And so that's why people are interested in BPC-157. But I just quickly want to go through what people are actually using this for. Because of the fact that it's being positioned as a healing peptide and good for tissue repair, a clear area of use is in actually tendon and ligament injuries or joint pain. So these would be things like Achilles injuries, rotator cuff injuries, and also muscle strains. So Things that pretty active people or athletes would experience. And so people in sport are interested because of this. But it is currently a banned substance. It's classed as a non-approved substance by the World Anti-Doping Agency. Just for any athletes out there, if you're watching. There's also some potential here for stomach-related issues like ulcers or inflammatory bowel disease. Again, I would think that this is because of the tissue repair that it can result in. And it has also gotten some popularity recently because more famous people have been using peptides, especially BPC-157, for its anti-aging effects. At this point, there is no evidence at all to suggest this or show this. In fact, studies on humans are incredibly rare. From what I could find so far, there's only a very small amount of research on humans using BPC-157. And the only use that I have seen it for is in musculoskeletal injuries, which, you know, lines up with how it works. Does this lack of research mean it doesn't work? Not necessarily. Peptides, they are a bit of a newer area, and that means research is probably ongoing at this very moment. There's probably quite a lot going on. We will probably see more and more research come out as years go by. But what you need to be careful about is buying BPC-157 products online. This is an unregulated space. So any products that you find online, there's no guarantee that they work. But more importantly, there's no guarantee that they are safe. And I always do sections in these videos where I show what the current research says. There's actually hardly anything to show at this point, so be careful. Just also know that you can't guarantee that the products that you find online actually even have proper BPC-157. It's just labels. It's not regulated. If you're really adamant about wanting to try it, you need to talk to your doctor and your medical professionals, especially if you are someone with already existing health issues. So things like kidney, liver, or heart problems. You need to make sure it's appropriate for you. At this stage, the best use case for BPC-157 is for people that have musculoskeletal injuries, so things like torn muscles, tendon problems. This is where I would see how it actually works, matches up with what it's being needed for. So like I said, at this stage here in Australia and also in the United States, this is not an approved supplement or medication, and it won't be until there is more human-based evidence. If anyone out there has tried this though, I would be very interested in hearing your experience. So please, if you're feeling up to it, share that in the comments. I hope this has helped explain what BPC-157 is because honestly, before making this video, I really didn't know much about it. And even after trying to learn about it, I think there are a few gaps that I have. When I approach decisions about whether a supplement or a medication is appropriate to take, it's always going to be about the risks versus the benefits. And right now, unfortunately, we don't know how safe this is, especially in the long term. We don't even know how effective it is either. So if there's too many question marks here for me. I will keep an eye on it, though, to see if that changes, because I'm sure much more information will come out soon or in the future. But I will see you in the next video. And until then, keep playing the long game.